Welcome to Mount Saint Sauveur, Quebec, where we are about to throw down the most exciting and anticipated snowboard contest of the year here in Canada. We have 40 of the world's best riders duking it out for $35,000. My name is Pete Anderson, and I'm proud to present the ninth edition of the Ride Shakedown. For the past nine years, the Ride Shakedown has been gaining momentum and is renowned for its innovative setups, high caliber riders, laid back atmosphere, and a format that really allows these athletes to let loose. In 2010, this event hit a major milestone when it opened up its first international franchise with a stop in the United States. Summit at Snoqualmie in Washington in the Pacific Northwest played host to the inaugural US edition of the Ride Shakedown. Mats Kulisek from saint Sauveur, Quebec showed his Canadian pride by taking the top step of the podium on U.S. soil. Although on the women's side, American Megan Ginter was not about to give up home turf advantage and took the win. I think this event is a lot more laid back and fun, so it's great to see so many people come and be so stoked on snowboarding, and it's a little more laid back, like you don't have to go exactly when they tell you, and you know, we get a good open window of get into session and then pick when we get a drop, so uh, I really like this event, it's fun. One Quebecois rider to keep your eyes on is Seb Tuton. He won this event at the ripe old age of 13 back in 2006, and then again last year with his signature move, the Tootsie Roll. Coming off of an injury, he's looking to prove that he's back with a third win here at the Ride Shakedown. My season this year was a really good start. And it was super good on the TTR World Tour. I was sitting in first, so it was super good. But uh, after at Aaron Style, I overshot the jump. I went too far, and I broke my ankle. So it was kind of a hard time for me. But um, I, I get a surgery, and then everything was super good. I was out for three months, and then now I'm back on my board for like three weeks. So we are here now, and beautiful weather, and then it should be good. Up next is the Coors Light Rail Jam. The riders are going to have to impress these judges to get one of two male and two female spots to move on to the final. The judges are looking for the riders that land the most tricks on the most obstacles with the most difficulty. Sounds easy enough, right? Let's take a better look at this rail complex. This year, the riders will have three options to choose from. The first module is a seven meter long flat rail which must be used on its total length to reach a concrete platform three meters down in the landing area. For the second option, the athletes must travel a distance of two meters to execute a maneuver on a concrete wall. Negotiating that kink at the bottom is essential for a perfect landing. Last but not least, a double kink rail standing over two set of stairs separated by a three and a half meter long sidewalk. The perfect speed is crucial to make it through the flat section without sacrificing both down segments. Obviously influenced by skateboarding, many snowboarders will focus on the handrail aspect. These guys will hit the streets constantly in search of new handrails to progress their side of the sport. The Coors Light Rail Jam is the perfect venue to showcase what they've got. Antonin Chamberlain coming in, 180 up and over onto that concrete wall ride. Phil Jacques showing who's in control on the down flat down. American Zach Hale stepping up and showing Jacques that two can play this game with a frontside board. Again, Antonin Chamberlain stepping up, 180 on and 180 off, coming down on that concrete landing. Our first female competitor, Jessica Kimura, showing us what she's got. Canadian Zach Stone, 270 out. Ooh, taking a bit of a ding on that rail. It's our first time seeing Forrest Bailey tonight. Oh, with tricks like that, it probably won't be the last. Oh, the core is starting to bite back a little bit. Phil Jacques, he's been eyeing up the cement ledge all night. Big frontside board. Oh, Sparks literally setting this course on fire. Jason Dubois, 180 on, 540 out. That's a 720 with rail, if my math serves me correctly. 
Chamberlain at it again. Backside 270 coming down on the flat section. Riders are starting to get warmed up. The crowd's starting to get into it. We're gonna start to see some big riding. Pierce Mimura up and over. Here at one more time with rotation. Oh, those young legs able to hold on. Forrest Bailey again, big 50-50, 360 out. Oh, I'll him with another transfer. Late in the game, Maria Tremblay trying to squeak into the finals. And that tail press might just be enough to get her in. The judges have decided on the finalists for the Coors Light Rail Jam. Two men, two women will each get two runs, at which point the single best trick on the men's side and the single best trick on the women's side will be going home with both the title and bragging rights for the next year. On the men's side, we've got Forrest Bailey and Antonin Chamberlain. Representing the women, marie alain Tremblay and Jessica Kimura. And marie alain is gonna be our first rider here at the finals. Coming up to the kink, 50-50, but comes up just a little bit short. Jessica Kimura. Ooh, looks like she's re-hurt a nagging elbow injury she's had all year. These girls are gonna have to capitalize on their second run. Forrest Bailey looking to stomp this first hit to put a little bit of pressure on Antonin Chamberlain. Oh, and that's gonna do it. Let's take a closer look at this. Front side lip slide, and then 180 degrees around for the front side board on that last part of the kink. He's gotta be happy with that. Chamberlain with some big shoes to fill on his first run. Backside 270, but coming up short. Do or die for the girls, second and final run. Maria Long coming off early. Jessica Kamura, if she stomps this, the contest is hers. Oh, going down hard again on that elbow. Looks like we we'll probably have a tie on the women's side. Oh, look at the swell bow. Chamberlain's got one last chance to steal it away from Forrest. Gets the 270 around, but just can't find his feet. Here's our winner, Forrest Bailey. This final hit just for fun and just for the crowd. And here you have our winners, Jessica Kimura and Mary Alain Tremblay, each winning $1,500 on the women's side. And for his work tonight, Forrest Bailey gets five grand.